The city of Temecula has been growing very rapidly. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the top five reasons people are moving to Temecula, and we are starting right now. Hi, I'm Jessica Janung with Active Realty. I'm a realtor and 10-year resident here in the Temecula Murrieta Valley. Every week we put out a video telling you everything you need to know about living and moving to the area. So you know the drill, like, comment, subscribe, and most important, hit that bell icon so you can be notified when we post a new video. Lastly, we love to hear from those of you who are considering making a move to our area. We have been helping lots of folks relocate here and we're always happy to answer any questions and talk about how to get you started on a home search. Call, text, email, send a raven, however you like, shoot us a message. Getting to our topic. Let's step back in history for just a minute. In the 1980s, the I-15 corridor between the greater Los Angeles area and San Diego was completed, and that's when the subdivision land boom began. In the 1990s is when the population of Temecula really exploded. Many families began moving to the area from San Diego, LA, Orange County, drawn by the affordable housing prices, and also the very popular wine country. I grew up in the neighboring town of Fallbrook, and I remember growing up, there was literally nothing here, so it has been very exciting to watch it grow over the years. According to the census taken in the year 2000, the population of Temecula was about 58,000 people. Today, 20 years later, we're in 2020, and the population is about 115,000, basically doubled in 20 years. Obviously, Temecula has become a very popular town to move to. Here are the top five reasons to move to Temecula. Reason number five, the weather. Temecula is often characterized as a Mediterranean climate. 75% of the year, the weather here, it's absolutely amazing. Today, we're in the middle of winter, it's February, and the forecast is 75 degrees today. That's gonna be the high. The general daily weather pattern is you're gonna have a little bit of morning mist, you're gonna have a warm and sunny midday, a little cooler in the afternoon with some ocean breezes, and then cooler at night. We do not get snow. Well, there was this one time. In the 10 years that we have lived here, it has snowed once. Here is a picture. I live in the neighboring town of Murrieta, and this is a picture of my backyard at the time. This was a very exciting event for our town. It was pretty hilarious, actually. Because this pretty much never happens here, people of all ages, they were outside, lining the streets, playing in the snow. They were sledding down hills on boogie boards. You get the picture. So pretty much no snow. We do get occasional rain, but not a ton. We do get hot in the summer. I always get asked about the summer weather. Is it Phoenix hot or Palm Springs hot? No, it's not Phoenix or Vegas or Palm Springs hot or even Florida hot for that matter. It is a dry heat. Average summer highs are going to be around the 90s and it does get over 100. Sometimes for a week or two at a time, the high will reach over 100. Then we normally get a break for a week or so and it can cycle back. Uh, it does cool down quite nicely in the evening. You will need air conditioning during these heat waves and there is about one week out of the year that you're likely gonna wanna run your AC even overnight to be comfortable. Larger homes in the area, typically above 2,500 square feet, they're actually gonna have two AC units, one for upstairs and one for downstairs. Our home has two units, but we're normally not running them both at the same time, just for the floor that we're hanging out on. A lot of homes in the area have what's called a whole house fan. My husband, Chris, is slightly obsessed with them. He thinks they're like the greatest invention known to mankind. If you're not familiar, here's what they look like. They're a big fan that lives in the attic. You basically open up a door or a window, even if it's just a few inches. You turn on the whole house fan and it sucks the outside air into the home and it pushes the inside stuffy air out and through the attic. Um, it, it makes very quick work of this actually. So after the sun goes down and the temperatures drop below 80 degrees is when we normally turn on our whole house fan. Uh, like I said, Chris, he'll be constantly checking the temperature and as soon as it drops like around 79 degrees below 80, he uh, commences the whole house fan process or whatever he says. You can run the whole house fan on low throughout the entire night or you can use the timer function and have it turn off after two or four or however many hours you set it to. They are much more energy efficient than running your air conditioner. 
If you have a home that doesn't happen to have a whole house fan, you can have one installed for about $1,500 is roughly what they run. Unlike big homes that need two AC units, you only normally need one whole house fan to cool up to a 4,000 square foot home. Uh, okay, enough about the whole house fan. Moving on, reason number four, the top ranking Temecula Unified School District. I use the website greatschools.org to get information on school ratings. Here is a map of all the schools in Temecula that are rated eight or higher. There are quite a few, including the only 10 in the area that I'm aware of, which is Great Oak High School in South Temecula. Even if you don't have children or school-aged kids, high-ranking schools does have a, pro a positive effect on your property value, so it doesn't hurt, that's for sure. The number three reason to move to Temecula is the natural beauty of the area. The Temecula Valley spans a 32 square mile area which lies to the west of a coastal mountain range. It's about 22 miles as the crow flies to the Pacific Ocean. The landscape of Temecula is very attractive with rolling hills and lots of homes with view lots. In the winter, the snow-capped peaks of Mount San Jacinto and Palomar Mountain, as well as Mount San Bernardino and Mount San Gorgonio, if that's how you say that mountain, uh, which lies to the north, can be seen from all around town. There are quite a lot of walking trails that are maintained by the HOAs in the city of Temecula all throughout town that are very beautifully landscaped with lots of trees and greenery. Uh, it is especially green after we get a nice rain. My favorite thing about uh, the Temecula landscape is the mountain views. It's very pretty. Reason number two, things to do within Temecula. There are countless things to do within the city of Temecula on any given day, not to mention all of the things to do that are within like an hour to an hour and a half proximity of Temecula. That video is on my list, but I need a lot more time to get into that. So within Temecula, you have a wonderful old town with lots of great shops, restaurants, and small businesses. Lots of specialty shops, for example, like the Temecula Cheese Shop, Olive Oil Tasting, a really fun speakeasy, just to name a few. Old Town is also full of culture, including Old Town Temecula Community Theater, Temecula Valley Museum, and for kids, Penny Pickles Workshop, which is a children's museum. Besides Old Town, you have over 40 wineries, as well as a growing brewery presence. Temecula Wine Country is a favorite among locals and has also become quite the destination for visitors. There's lots of wine tasting, of course, and great restaurants where you can enjoy brunch, lunch, or dinner with really fabulous views. Wine Country often has events, activities for kids, and live music in the evenings. There's also concerts, cooking classes, horseback riding, hot air balloon rides, Temecula, they're known for that, several fabulous spas, and more. Um, the wine tours are really fun, by the way. You can go around with a group, normally on a bus, and they typically stop at like three wineries and often include lunch. There is always something happening in wine country. The huge Pachanga Resort and Casino is located in South Temecula if you want to try your luck gambling. They have slots, table games, and bingo. They also have many restaurants, a hotel, like five pools, lots of entertainment events, an RV park, and a world-class golf course. There are many golf courses to choose from in Temecula if that is your thing. Lastly, there's the Promenade Mall if you want to get in some shopping. It's quite a nice mall, lots of shops and restaurants uh, to choose from there as well. The number one reason to move to Temecula, it's affordable. Affordable and nice, as I always say, which don't usually go hand in hand in Southern California. If you are into a good value, then the Temecula area is your place. The median home price is currently about $480,000. If you are trying to buy a home in neighboring Orange County or San Diego with that budget, you are not going to get much. Maybe, maybe a condo, maybe. I recently read a stat that in neighboring Orange County, over 40% of listings are asking a million dollars or more. If you take that million dollars here and come to Temecula, you can buy a mansion pretty much. You do not have to be rich to enjoy the wonderful lifestyle that the Temecula area has to offer. That wraps up my top five reasons to move to Temecula. Even if you are only just thinking about moving to the Murrieta or Temecula area, please reach out to me. Give me a call, text, email, even send a carrier pigeon. So tell me, did I miss any of the great reasons to move to Temecula? I had to pick only five. 
What are your favorite reasons for living and moving to Temecula? I have actually had a few local residents comment to me to stop telling everybody about this great area because it's getting more crowded. Um, but the secret, it's already out and you can't hide a good thing. Thanks so much for watching my video and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.